from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from an anonymous donor from Scarborough, Ontario. This Mass is offered for the living and deceased members of the Lee Chong Ken family. In thanksgiving for the televised Mass and for world peace, we know that this television Mass brings meaning to the lives of thousands of Canadians across our land, and they join with me in thanking you for this gift. Let us begin the Eucharist by acknowledging our sins and so preparing ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared fitting helps for us in our weakness, grant, we pray, that we may receive their healing effects with joy and reflect them in a holy way of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The ungodly reasoned unsoundly, saying to themselves, let us lie in wait for the righteous man, because he is inconvenient to us and opposes our actions. He reproaches us for sins against the law and accuses us of sins against our training. He professes to have knowledge of God and calls himself a child of the Lord. He became to us a reproof of our thoughts. The very sight of him is a burden to us because his manner of life is unlike that of others and his ways are strange. We are considered by him as something base and he avoids our ways as unclean. He calls the last end of the right, righteous happy and boasts that God is his father. Let us see if his words are true, and let us test what will happen at the end of his life. For if the righteous man is God's child, he will help him and will deliver him from the hand of his ad adversaries. Let us test him with insult and torture, so that we may find out how gentle he is and make trial of his forbearance. Let us condemn him to shameful death, for according to what he says, he will be protected. Thus they reasoned, but they were led astray, for their wickedness blinded them, and they did not know the secret purpose of God, nor hope for the wages of holy, holiness, nor discern the price for blameless souls. The word of the Lord. to cut off the remembrance of them from 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went about in Galilee. He did not wish to go about in Judea because the Jewish leaders were looking for an opportunity to kill him. Now the Jewish festival of booths was near. But after his brothers had gone to the festival, then he also went not publicly, but as it were, in secret. Now some of the people of Jerusalem were saying, is not this the man whom the authorities are trying to kill? And here he is speaking openly, but they say nothing to him. Can it be that the authorities really know that this is the Messiah? Yet we know where this man is from. But when the Messiah comes, no one will know where he is from. And then Jesus cried out as he was teaching in the temple, you know me and you know where I am from. I have not come on my own. But the one who sent me is true and you do not know him. I know him because I am from him and he sent me. And then they tried to arrest Jesus, but no one laid hands on him because his hour had not yet come. The Gospel of the Lord. In the first weeks of Lent, the readings are all about us, about prayer and fasting and almsgiving, what we must do Repentance, remember your dust and to dust you will return. To repent of your sins, be converted and live. But you'll notice that as we get closer to Holy Week, the readings shift their focus. They're not about us now, they're about him, Jesus. 
our Savior. And not about the God that he was, but about the man that he was. Flesh and blood, able to suffer and to die. We're asked to turn our attention and let now to him. He died for our sins. Theologians say, you know, that Jesus, by his death, resurrection, satisfied divine justice fully for our sins. He made atonement for our sins. But divine justice does not explain why Jesus died a painful death. After all, one drop of his blood shed when he got a splinter in his finger when he was working in the carpentry shop was enough to satisfy the divine justice for a thousand worlds worse than ours. And you know, the picture that Jesus paints of his father is not of a God who is much concerned about divine justice. He tells the story of the servant who owed his master a huge amount of money and he was going to be thrown in jail and he pleaded for time. And the master forgave him the whole amount without a word, forgave him the whole amount. And last Sunday we heard the story of the prodigal son. The elder son was concerned about justice. It's not fair to me that you treat your younger son so well, but all the father wanted to do was to get him back safe and sound. It's not divine justice that explains the crucifixion of Jesus. It is divine mercy, and only divine mercy that can explain it. The Genesis gives us the reason why gives us the beginning to understand the reason why. It says that we had our first parents, our first two parents, led a sheltered life in a garden. They were like us. Don't think that they weren't like us. They were flesh and blood. They could suffer. They could die. But they were protected. They were sheltered. God sheltered them in the garden so they didn't have sickness Everybody was a vegetarian. The animals didn't eat one another. All of that was protection of God in the garden. They didn't know a thing about evil, but they wanted to. They wanted to. They hadn't reached their full potential. The, the snake told them that. If they didn't know evil, they wouldn't have reached their full potential. They wouldn't have become like God. And so they wanted to. And so they did indicate by eating the fruit, it's a metaphor, that they wanted to know evil. And you know, God forbade it. We're not quite sure when he intended to let them eat that, let them know about good and evil, but he forbade it at the time. And when he forbade it, he, they did it, they disobeyed him. What he did then was not punishment. It was accepting their decision. You want to know evil? Okay. That's your choice. I made you free. So he made it easy for them to know evil. He withdrew that protection of the garden. That's all he did. Withdrew the protection of the garden. He was still there, but now they had the responsibility of protecting themselves from evil. And as soon as they found out what their choice meant, they regretted it because it was much harder than they thought it would be to know evil, to live in a world surrounded by evil. And our Lord, 
because of divine mercy, came to live in that world with them, to teach them how to live in that world. God did not abandon them. He sent them teachers, Moses, the prophets, and Jesus, to teach them by word and example how to live that hard life they had chosen, that we had chosen, and live it well. It is divine mercy that gave us a Savior who would share this hard light we chose with us and live it to the hilt, unprotected, so they could kill him. He could suffer and die. And he received this great gift. You know, the great gift of the teacher, to be able to get inside the heads and the hearts of the students. Receive the gift of the Spirit to get inside so that they too, he could teach not only from the outside, but from the inside. It is this man, this God, that we contemplate in the last seasons of Lent. Let us take a moment now to pray for those intentions for which we wish to pray at this Eucharist. Let us pray for the church throughout the world. As we celebrate Lent together, let us pray to the Lord. Lord let us pray for all the peoples of the earth. God died for them all. Let us pray for peace and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord let us pray for this community. All those who join us in television and have asked us to pray for their intentions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Most merciful and generous God, hear these prayers and answer them in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the earth, earth fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Yes, With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. My brothers and sisters, please pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacrifice, Almighty God, cleanse us by its mighty power and lead us to approach its source with ever greater purity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through bodily fasting you restrain our faults, raise up our minds, and bestow both virtue and its rewards through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Thank you. i
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Thomas our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, we give you power and now Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with yours. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as we pass from old to new, so with former ways left behind, we may be renewed in holiness of mind through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. Please remember that all requests for special prayers are read by Father Bush, Father Coots, Father Donovan, Father Lynch, and Father Fitzpatrick. And your intentions are carried with them to the altar for the celebration of Holy Mass.